Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour. My daughter is my co-host today. Open phones at 888 825 This is the show where we love you so much we will tell you the truth. And sometimes you won't like it. But we're here because we care about you, and we're going to help. I'll say so, it nice. I'll say the truth nicer than maybe he will sometimes. Maybe. <laughs> sometimes I'm nicer. We're matching today. I just saw us in the camera. I was little, like, well, little, look at us. Little black action here. Color, yeah. color coordinating. Yeah. You know what makes you look thinner than wearing black? What? Being thinner. <laughs> I discovered I that. That's a personal revelation of mine. <laughs> Open phones at 888 Mary is starting us off in St. Louis. Hi, Mary. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So the last few weeks, uh, to be honest, I've gone down a little bit of a Dave Ramsey rabbit hole on YouTube. So I'm just kind of getting to know um, your principles. I'm really intrigued by them. Uh, but I have a real question about your baby steps, the $1,000 emergency fund philosophy. I think my husband and I might be a little out of whack when it comes to following the steps. Um, ex- exactly correct. We have a uh, $16,000 car loan. We have a $215,000 mortgage. Um, and we have about 30000 in non-retirement investments. Um, and we've also started a few small investment accounts for our children. We're trying to increase our retirement to 15. We're kind of trying to do everything at one time. Yeah. Um, my question. And you did all of that long before you even heard of us. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. We've been trying to save, you know, as as much as possible and and really, you know, try to pay off as car loans and things like that. So we have one car loan left. Um, my question is this, it's taken us several years to save that money that we have in the non-retirement investments. And we currently have a deck in our backyard that is literally falling apart. Mm -hmm. So we've been quoted to remove it and replace it with a patio for about Mm $15,000. Um, what's your household income? Uh, about 145. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess my question is, and I, you know, I, I also am worried if we use the money to pay off the car loan and then we do the patio, I just always like having some cushion to know that if there are big purchases that come up, um, that we have enough cash to do it. And so mm-hmm. I guess I just wanted to know what your philosophy was on based on everything, you know, where we're at. Um, the summary of the background of the baby steps was this, when I first started teaching, uh, basic financial principles 30 years ago, I would have this exact conversation with people. Where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? And uh, a couple of philosophies emerged um, as we worked with thousands and thousands of people, now millions of people years later. But uh, the philosophies, uh, number one that emerged was the number one wealth building tool that you have is your income. When you give it to other people in the form of payments, you limit or slow down or even stop your ability to build wealth. So becoming debt-free, first personal, later home, is an essential part of a long-term wealth-building plan because the money you make, $145,000, should turn you into a millionaire. Okay. If you don't give it all to someone else in the form of car payments, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that's the general philosophy, okay? The general philosophy number two was people kept saying, where do I start? Because 100% of us, including no matter how much money you make, uh, have competing priorities. We have a broken down deck. We have a, uh, a, a uh, an emotional need for a pad of an emergency fund laying there. Um, we have high school kids. They're going to be going to college got soon. College you know. kids coming yeah. at us. We've got life insurance we need. We've got a next car we might need to purchase. We've got another thing. We got to think about Christmas. God, it's going to be here again in yeah. 20 minutes. You know, and we've got all these things coming at us. And so the what we came up with was the baby steps. And the reason they've been so successful is uh, because it gives you a very clear path 
uh, that is based in good, solid financial planning principles and a get-out-of-debt philosophy, and it's the shortest distance between where you are and wealth. Now, Mm -hmm. it might not be the shortest distance between where you are and a deck, but it's the shortest distance between where you are and wealth. And that's what the whole thing's built on. And so what we would tell you to do is have $1,000 first. Any other non-retirement money you have, the 30000 bucks in your case, would be to come become debt-free except your home. So we pay off your car by the time you... By the time dinner is here tonight, you pay okay. off the car, okay? Then that okay. leaves you um, $14,000, and you have a deck problem, and you make 145000 So we need to get a deck fixed. you have any money in savings at all other than this non-retirement? Um, we have about um – we have a small savings account. It's about five thousand right okay, now. So, that's so a, I would that, keep some of that other though, but yeah. instead of the deck for your emergency fund, because yeah. when you said I just want to have some cushion, that's what that provides you. Yeah. And then you guys make great money, and I would just cash flow the deck. Put in, yeah, put in the budget. Hey, we're going to save X amount per month towards the deck. And so let's, let's can, pretend. Okay, okay, so you make a hundred. You're right, Rachel. You're, you make one hundred forty-five. Let's call twenty thousand your emergency fund, which would probably be about right. And you never touch yep. that ever. For anything. It's not for purchases. Yeah. A, a bass boat, another car is not an emergency. Okay. Okay. This is only if the world come, comes to an end. I mean, only if the transmission goes out. Only if your mother or your relative or whoever in another state passed away and you got to buy an airline ticket. I mean, only as an emergency, an unexpected event. A deck falling off is gradual. That's not unexpected. Yeah. Okay. That's true. So to Rachel's point, we're going to put 20,000 bucks there. Now you got no car payment and now you're going to get on a detailed budget and start working these plans. Uh, and, and I would save up for that deck very rapidly. I think you can save for that deck by Christmas. Okay. And, and then you pay cash for it. Oh, by the way, in the winter, the guys aren't working as much in St. Louis. And so you might get a better deal. Yeah, okay. Than a a deck in the summer. I could be wrong, but Mm -hmm. I think so. And so and so on. Okay, now we got a deck, and now we got baby step four is 15% of your income going to retirement. You already got the kids' college going. You already got that going. And now let's start just thinking about how are we going to knock out this little $215,000 mortgage? It's not much. You sound young. How young are you? I'm 34. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys same age, right? So Yeah. Um, 35. 35. But basically. Yeah, just close enough. But yeah. But I mean, that's a, a, when, when you're my age, it's really close. So, but <laughs> the, uh, yeah. So anyway, the, the point is the, uh, 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 you know, you're gonna, gosh, you, you should have this house paid off before you're 40. Yeah. Y'all are going to see a lot of traction, Mary, because you guys, you already have the instinct. You've been doing this. And like yeah. you said, it's, everything's a little bit all over. You just need more of a concise plan. But there's no power. And you're going to see it. In lack of focus, focusing and working straight down those baby steps gives you a power uh, because it keeps you from doing other stuff. When you try to do six things at once, nothing gets done. But you can do one thing, you can get the one thing done. And so we got the car and we got the deck. Now we got the retirement. We got the kids' college going. Now we're going to start working on the house. One thing, ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Ha! Coming up is Jackson, Michigan. Mike's on the line. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, Dave. How about you? Enjoy your show. Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Quick question for you. I am retired. We are retired, and uh, we have no debt. 
and we're purchasing a new car, and we could pay cash for the new car. Uh, if we could get a financing deal and we can invest that same amount of money in CDs over that same period of time, what's your recommendation? Pay Do cash pay for the cash car. car or, pay cash pardon? for the car or don't buy it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Okay. How much, how much what's your net worth? Uh, about 2.5 million. Yeah. You didn't get that by playing games like this. You know, well, I, it, you got I've this by saving it. money and right. investing money. Right. But you didn't borrow on uh, a car and invest the difference. No, I, what I was talking about is, is I know what you're talking about, but I mean, yeah. my point is, is you no. steadily invested over a long period of time to get 2.5 million. You did not borrow money and invest borrowed money to become a multimillionaire, did you? Correct. Correct. Okay. And and now you're going back on all your old ways. Don't do it. Go stick with the plan that got you here. You're incredible, right. man. Congratulations, hero. Thank you. I wish I would have found you a lot earlier. It would have made the path a little bit easier, but I enjoy your show. Enjoy I don't think listening. it's ever easy, but you you scored touchdown in the Super Bowl, as far as I'm concerned, my man. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Worked hard to get there. Thank you very much. That's so cool. You know, it's funny that, uh, Rachel, when you start paying attention to money, and obviously that's one of the things that's required to end up with $2.5 million. I kind of thought he was going to tell me that, by the way. Yeah. Um, kind of. Felt it, and, you know. He's just like, hey, but it, the people just you, you're they're thinking about money, not in a negative way, not in a greedy way. Not I'm obsessed with money, but instead of just you know, it's like people that drive and pay attention when they're driving, and the ones that drive and don't pay attention when they're driving, and that's what they do with their money. They they don't pay attention, or they do, and the ones that do pay attention, if you just think about it, even though he was getting ready to do a dumb thing, but I mean. It, it, he's a guy that thinks about it. That's why he won. Yeah, it's why he won. And and I think this is where people can overthink something yeah. and take the math of something and think, okay, well, I can kind of beat the system here. Because we hear that all the time, right? Paying off your house or even debt. You know, people use debt and want to keep debt around because like, well, if I invested that amount of money instead of paying it off, I would make more. Mm -hmm. And the, you know what I mean? Like they start to, they start to overthink it where I'm always like, oh my gosh, you have to like untangle it. And almost in a sense, Remember what brought you here? Yes. And what is the emotion that you have when you're not attached to debt? What, is, what How do you mm -hmm. feel? And that mm -hmm. behavior part, mm -hmm. I feel like some people, you know, jump. But I, but I appreciated his question because, I mean, I think there are people naturally that are like, I want to do well with money. What, yeah. What's my, what's the quickest path That's how from got point, a, point yeah. a to point yeah. B? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You're exactly right. And, and so sometimes what can happen is, is you try to fix something with the math and you forget the heart. That's right. You, you know, use only your brain and not your heart because your heart measures risk and your head does math. And so if you're, if you, you know, oh, I worked so hard to be debt free. And then all of a sudden you forget and go back into debt mm -hmm. on a car. That was so, so, so absurd when you think about it. Right. But, but at least he's on pat task and he's thinking about it. He's, he's a, a person that considers these things and is asking questions. Yeah, absolutely. Still, absolutely. still curious. Yeah. Still curious. Yep. Two and a half million dollars in. Well done, sir. Well done. I'm proud of you. Stephen is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Good. Good. I had a question for you. I'm well versed in your program. Um, I'm 52 and I've got three boys. One is a junior in college or is going to be a junior. The other one is going to be a freshman in college, and the other one's just going into high school, so he's not far off from college either. My wife and I have made the decision to try to pay their uh, tuitions in full. Good. And we've got, yeah, we've got good 529 programs, but they're just not going to cover all of it. So we're trying to make up some ground in a, a fairly short period of time. And I wanted to see what your thoughts are on bar basically moving the uh, principal that we've paid into our Roth retirement accounts and moving that over to the 529. It's about 110000 That would basically uh, kind of get the deal done. And I ran, you know, we ran the hypotheticals. I'm still going to have about $2.2 .2 million when it, uh, it comes to retirement time, which is uh, more than enough for, for our lifestyle. So just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, how much money is in your retirement now? Uh, about 900000 Okay. And you don't have any other money? 
Uh, I've got our emergency fund. When you're saying pay in full, Stephen, you mean just like semester by semester, right? Correct. For all three boys, for yeah. all four years. What's your household income? 150000 Okay. Um, no, but, go ahead. Well, I just want to make sure, Stephen, that, yeah, you're, I mean, you guys will pay each semester when the semester comes. You're not looking. How much is in the 5.9? Uh, let's see. There's about a hundred and ten thousand in there now. Okay. And what's the total? What's the total budget for the kids to go to school? The tuitions. Uh, they're about, let's see, about forty-five a year, or yeah, about forty-five a year for each kid. That includes dorm and and everything. Yeah, that, that's that's everything. So yeah. you're you aren't talking about just tuition. You're covering everything. Correct. Okay. And so you got 80 a year right now. Correct. And you got 110 in there. So you got a year's worth. You don't have enough even if you move the Roth. Uh, well, no. So we, we can get out. We'll continue to save for our youngest. So we will basically, you know, fund that difference. Yeah, but you don't have enough even no. if you move the Roth because you, you, you're, you're burning 80 a year. Uh, for the next two years, that's 160, and after that, you're burning another no, 80 on him. only two are in college. Only two. I know. Two are in college now. 40 each. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 40 so, each? Yeah, so 80K per year, and you got a freshman and you got a junior. So for the next two years, that's 160. You only got 210. Well, we'll cash flow some of it. So, yeah, the math isn't. Apples to apples. You're not going to get there. What we need yeah, to. You're not going to get there. Um, <sighs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to think. So, so your freshman, when your freshman graduates, will you have another? Will you have two in school like ever again, or is it the one going to leave about the time the other one comes in? The the one leaves as soon as the other one comes in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're going to be, once right. you get past this two years, you're at a 40 a year burn rate, give or take. Correct. Correct. And that doesn't count them getting a job, which they need to do, um, and, yeah, and they, applying for scholarships, do, they which they need to do. Right. Um, I just, it, it just, I, it just goes against everything I am to start cashing out retirement for college. Um, I'm certainly not going to borrow to do it, so I'd do that before I'd borrow. And by the way, you can't roll a Roth into a 529. You can just cash it out. Correct. Yeah, so it's not, yeah. you said, I'll put it in the 529. You can't, but you can just take it out yeah. and spend it. And I wouldn't do that until I'd emptied the 529. I'd let it sit there and grow, grow additional growth before you move it tax-free, right? And so yeah. you got, I, I'm going to try to make it two more years and get that la get the first one out of school. And then get down to the 40 burn rate. If you got down to the 40 burn rate with this money, that'll get, no, that just makes it one year. Uh. Yeah, it's interesting to me. It's the, you know, it's a, it, it rubs me the wrong way because it's kind of against the principle of It's against everything, I believe. Yeah, I'll just, I, I'm going to do everything I can to not do it. So, so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to use the 529, I'm going to cash flow like a bandit. And, and I'm going to put kids to work, and I'm going to go for scholarships and try to not touch this. If you do touch it, make it the last thing you do, and you allow it to sit there and grow as long until as then. Mm -hmm. And so maybe only in the uh, fourth or fifth year or whatever else. What else can we sell? Do we have any other assets? Do we have anything we can do? Because this 100000 is worth millions if you'll leave it alone and not take it out of there. What, you're, what it's going to cost you and miss is just ridiculous because you're getting tax-free growth on it. I hate to touch it. I really hate to touch it. So it'd be the very last thing I'd do. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. 
Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Ramsey Show question of the day sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Most American homes have dozens of appliances, and chances are at any given time there's something wrong with at least one of them. Mr. Appliance, a Neighborly brand, offers expert appliance service on your schedule. Visit Neighborly.com to find home service experts, including a Mr. Appliance in your area. Today's question comes from Jonathan in Florida. I am 35 and my wife just had our first baby. I have roughly $43,000 in debt. My annual income is around $73,000. I'm wanting to start my baby steps, but I had a quick question about baby step one and two. I have a credit card that is maxed out at the $1,000 limit. If I pay that card off, can I count that? As my baby step one and then tackle my debt snowball while simultaneously putting a thousand dollars cash in my savings account. No, John. That is so convoluted. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Because no, a maxed out credit card for a thousand dollars is not considered your emergency fund. Your emergency fund is considered cash that you have saved. So your own money. So before you pay off your credit card. You save a thousand dollars cash. Mm -hmm. Then you start working to pay off your debts, and no, this I, might be the first one you pay off. <laughs> I appreciate Jonathan's. You know, if I have a thousand dollar limit, can I just cash out a thousand dollars, put that, and then the throw underlying, it in my debt story. the underlying <laughs> bullcrap so well. in this question is that he's going to use his credit card as his emergency. I know card. he's going to go cash so out a thousand dollars. So time he has an emergency, he's going to use a stupid credit card. So that's the underlying bullcrap. Yeah, that's just no. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Wish it was that easy. You know, Sharon, Sh it's Rachel's not. mom, when, I'm, when I do crap like this, Jonathan, she goes, you're scheming and scamming again. You're trying to find a shortcut. Quit scheming and scamming. Just do the work, boy. That's Sharon. That's Rachel's mom. That's 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 what I get. So, yeah, Jonathan, just you're scheming and scamming, Jonathan. Just do the work, oh, boy. Scheme and scam. I mean, oh, my gosh. That's it. Yeah, quit. You cannot scam your way into wealth, okay? You can't even trick yourself into it. And uh, so... <laughs> no, we're not going to go $1,000 in credit card debt for the emergency fund, but we appreciate the question. So cute. Here's a more sophisticated problem. So this was sent to me via Instagram. Appreciate all my Instagram people out there because uh, they will send me things a lot. And they're like, oh, my gosh, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And this one came up. You know, up. people might send me stuff, too, but I don't look at it. So I wouldn't know. Uh, you have to you like read the messages or something. Is that what you're Dave, supposed to do? I am part of the people. These are my people. So, yes, I get on and talk to people on social media. You oh, could, too. Social media. You oh, could, too. Oh, that's how it works. They're real people out there on the other side I know. that enjoy your stuff. You I, should get I in I love them and so much, I'm not going to get on it. you should go so, and talk okay. to them. Anyway, somebody, So, they're talking yes. to you, and they sent you this. Yes, and I read the messages, because I read my messages, and they're like, hey, I want you and Dave to talk about it. And I was like, oh, well, perfect. We're going to be on the show together. So... This was from a New York Times article, and the headline was, I've hidden my trust fund for 15 years. Do I finally tell my spouse? So, are you ready for this? I'm a 44-year-old man, and I've been married to my spouse for 10 years. We've been together for 15. Unbeknown to my spouse, I have a trust fund that provides me with a monthly income of $25,000. When we first met, I said that I worked as a consultant, and... 
they've never questioned it. My spouse, a dedicated doctor, works long hours and doesn't like to discuss work when not on the job. Over the years, I have repeatedly assured my spouse that they don't need to work as my income is secure and stable. They are, however, passionate about their career and have chosen to continue working. I actively serve on various boards, but I have never held a full-time job and don't plan to. Our lifestyle is comfortably upper middle class, and I am content with that. My dilemma is whether I should reveal the truth about my trust fund to my spouse. My family members have always advised against disclosing our financial situation, but the weight of the secret is becoming too difficult to bear. What do you do all day? <laughs> he sits on boards. Oh, that's, that's what he said. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, Plays Wordle. I wonder how often like this kind of well we well we know that spouses hide things from one another that's a that's a consistent theme through life like that's a known thing um but this one was just interesting because i'm like okay 25 grand a month i wonder what she thinks that he does to earn that amount of money (laughs) i don't know so anyways um what i would tell the name is withheld they did not disclose the name in the new york times article so yes, if anyone out there has this dilemma, <laughs> no, or, or no one, one else has this dilemma, or the idea that you have a secret that is too unbearable to bear that is from your spouse, listen, we always teach and talk about and believe that being on the same page with your spouse is much better. So coming clean and telling them anything and everything when it comes to money, anything you are withholding is not only going to just lift the weight off your shoulders that you've been carrying around having to navigate. Because I think about this situation, which this is kind of, true. I know it's a little absurd. But if you do think about it, I'm like, the amount of like probably lies and deception that had to have occurred. To cover the big lie. To cover the big lie. That's a lot of work in life. And I don't know who has time for that. So I'm just like, free you're, yourself. You're burning an awful lot of calories free being yourself. a liar. Being a liar. And, and you've been with your spouse for 10, I mean, like, I mean, I think it's fine. And then, you know what? She probably still wants to be a doctor because she's passionate about her work, and that's great. But, yeah, being upfront, honest, disclosing everything, regardless of whether it's a $25,000 trust fund or it's a secret credit card that you have, whatever it is, uh, you and your spouse being on the same page is is crucial to to winning, winning long term. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you should have disclosed this day one, and you should be continually. You should not have any secrets from your spouse. Hello. Period. I mean, that's just a thing. Okay, you just cannot build a quality relationship on deception. Duh. Okay, so your family is screwed up, dude, because your family is telling you that your money and you're not needing to work is is you how they know your secret and your own freaking wife does not and your family thinks that's good your family screwed up and then they left you money so you don't have to work that's screwed up so let me tell you if you're going to participate in the ramsey trust it involves continually working because working is good for the soul like real work yeah doing work showing up and doing stuff you know this is not good. This is not healthy. There's nothing in this that's fun. Or, and it's only $25,000, only $300,000 a year. It's not like you're freaking rich. I mean, it's three hundred grand. Jeez. <laughs> no, I mean, really. No, I mean, it's not, it's not $3 million. It's 300000 And what has this guy not done with his life that he should have done? It's pretty good. I, I agree. He should have done something with his life. Instead, he's... The king well, of Wordle. Well, I mean, no, oh my God. I mean, no, really. I mean, he could I be serve sitting on, on boards. That's code for I don't do much. I'm <laughs> telling you, serious. This is wrong. It's wrong, wrong, I agree. wrong, wrong, I agree wrong, that wrong. It is wrong. It's deception and it's all glassed over as if my family has said we should not share our money information because your family thinks this money is a bigger deal than it is. It's just some your freaking money. It's money. more important than your spouse. Yeah. And more important than your integrity. In your marriage. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, you've been living a long time in the in the soup of deception, and it's it's poisoned you, man. Really, the cleanest, best thing you can do, you'll be like an alcoholic who dr- sits down the bottle when you quit lying. You're gonna have a cleanliness of soul that's gonna be so good for you. And is she gonna be pissed? Well, yeah, of course she's gonna be pissed. She's been lied to for 15 years. 
Jeez. So, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of course she's going to be mad. Yeah. I mean, she If she's not, she's a wuss. She should be mad. This is just nutty. Anger is a good thing. Yeah. In that situation. I mean, really, you... But you're, you're, you're living a lie. That's why you had to put it out on the dadgum ethicist columnist page. You have, <laughs> to, go to, you have to go to ethics class to figure this one out. This is why we need ethics classes. Uh, uh, yeah, son. Uh, don't and, and Papa, don't do this to your kids. You're better off teach them how to work and give them no money than give them this crap. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ashley's in Nashville. Hi, Ashley. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? Um, so I just wanted to get your all's opinion. Um, I have a friend that does your all's program as well as I've been doing it since 2020. I'm still in baby set two. Um, and we've discussed it a few times, but I'm just not sure of my decision. So, um, in 2019, we adopted our son and then a year later, um, our marriage fell apart and we split up. So fast forward to now, um, we've been to court two times over custody issues. A lot of nonsense, really. His dad's just really hard to get along with. Um, so, but in those two times, it's cost me around twenty to $25,000 in court returning fees and everything else. So, um, I'm trying to just gain some traction on, um, maybe preparing for that in the future. Cause I feel like it's not going away and still being able to pay off my debt. I really just don't know what to do. Mm. I'm sorry, Ashley. That's really, yeah. That's a that's a really hard situation. Um, how much how much money do you make a year? Um, so I work as much overtime as I can. Um, I try to. Last year I made around a hundred a hundred thousand, and then um, this year it's probably going to be between eighty and ninety. Okay. What do you do? I'm a nurse. Yeah, good for you. Thank you. Uh, how much how much debt in general do you have? Um, all together is probably around ninety thousand. Um, it's a mixture of vehicles, uh, to well, my vehicle alone, and then um, I have some credit cards and a line of credit at the bank. 
What do you owe in your car? Uh, twenty-five. Okay. All right. So you have ninety thousand in debt and twenty-five of its car, and then how much of its credit cards? Um, around nine thousand. Okay. So the rest of it is what? Um, I have a line of credit, which is around twenty thousand that I opened up uh, to pay for court fees. Um, and I'm not sure. I can't think of anything else. So I might be. Yeah, okay, that's only forty five. That's only fifty four thousand. So I have another vehicle in my name, but I don't pay for it. So that's another forty eight thousand, but that's not mine. It's what in the world? Who, who? What is that? It's his truck, but he makes all the payments on that. It doesn't cost me anything, but we went in together to get it. So. So your name is on the is it on the deed, on the on the loan? On the title of the yeah. truck. Yeah, yeah. But the divorce decree gave him the truck, and you're supposed to pay it, or he's supposed to pay it. So that's not his. No, that's like my fiance that I have now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, you, so you have a so you're you, you you're bought engaged. a truck for your fiance for fifty thousand dollars. So we went in together. I didn't necessarily buy it for him um we did something that we just done together he needed you to co-sign it no no he's i mean he's doing good with his money you know he he's no he's not he took out a fifty thousand dollar truck loan he's not doing good with his money um i mean yeah why are you on the loan uh because i mean we're we're getting married and um i just I don't know. It was. When are you getting married? Uh, hopefully within the next year. Okay. All right. In the in the whole story that you told us, that has a lot of uh, tragedy and sadness, this thing then jumps up as super stupid and crazy. Right. Like a fifty thousand dollar truck while you're fighting and don't have the money to pay, and you have to take out a line of credit. And, and the best idea y'all got to go in debt for fifty grand on a truck while you're trying to keep a dadgum child in, in a custody battle ongoing with a crazy ex. Yeah. This truck is I crazy. Know. Nuts. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. So you, you're getting married. When did you say? Probably within a year. Okay. Uh, why are you waiting? Um, honestly, because everything's just been so crazy with my ex for the past two years, and I've dealt with um, anxiety and depression. Um, my son has a lot of issues he was uh, now, born with. Yeah, none of that's changing in a year. I'm sorry? None of that is changing in a year. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, we just, we just not... I don't know, just anxiety and depression on my side mm-hmm. and my main focus being my son. Mm-hmm. Right, that's just not been at okay. the top of the list, I guess. Okay. You you called and asked us for help, and we love you, and we want you to win. And we're sad that you're having to fight to keep your baby, okay? Now, yes. then I'm going to tell you some hard stuff. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Sell the stupid truck. Get married. Now. Mm -hmm. or don't but don't wait around on some mythical island to come sailing up some mythical ship to come sailing up to your island when everything's going to be right because the things you've been facing part of your anxiety and part of the things you've been facing with mental health stuff is not just your ex it's this pile of stuff on you and all of these un uh untied knots knots that need to be tied Okay. Right. You don't have closure on anything. All these open ended things or there's open ended mm-hmm. this, open ended that, open ended this. There's no closure anywhere and that creates angst. It creates anxiety. So um yeah, you've got to get some some predictable order, not chaos. To, the more areas of your life you can get non-chaos in, the, the faster your anxiety is going to drop. I'm not a mental health professional. Dr. John Deloney is. I've just heard him say that, so I said it, okay? But that's the yeah. truth, okay? Mm-hmm. So, and these, you know, and, and the debt 
and the pile of debt you guys have, you have, and now you guys with this $50,000 truck is part of where your anxiety is coming from because you don't, you feel trapped and now you're, you're worried about the next time the crazy X comes at you. How are we going to cover that? Meantime, I got a $48,000 truck note. Okay. And I know he takes care of it, Ashley, but 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 the truth is though, if he doesn't, it's on you then. And right? so you're so, carrying this around your neck. You feel it in your between your shoulder blades. You feel the weight of it. And that's part of the anxiety. You can't keep from doing that, by the way. It's just how your body and your mind and your spirit works. So, yeah, if I if you were my little sister or, or my daughter, I would tell you, get married and sell the truck by the weekend or run this mm-hmm. guy off and sell the truck by the weekend. But paint or get off the ladder. Right. Okay. That's what I would tell you to do if I loved you. And I do. So I want you to do that. Okay. And then we want you to uh, take this wonderful income you have and you have a fabulous career choice because you'll always have a job and you can always make money when you're a nurse. It's just a great and, job. And done. Ashley, I would sell your car. Honestly, I would get any level uh, yeah. of traction for 25,000. I'm like, you can get a used $10,000, whatever it is, but just... I would I would get out of that. How hard would you work? How crazy would you go to have twenty thousand dollars in the bank and no debt? So next time crazy X comes around, you can punch him in the nose with a lawyer. Right. Well, that, that's what I thought I was doing this last time. But. Exactly. And now, but you didn't. You went over the car lot with your goober fiance and bought a truck. Right. Okay. So you went the other way. So I want you to sell everything in sight, work like crazy people, live on beans and rice, rice and beans, get married, and let's get the build, credit card debt paid off. I mean, all of it. Yeah. yeah. Start getting some traction with that debt payoff, Ashley. And I think you're going to start to feel more in control. Because you are. That's why you'll feel that way. Because you're going to run the chaos off and drive order in and and build a build a tra- build a war chest to go to war, and then you can fight for this baby. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour podcast on the Ramsey Networks with old George Camel, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sarah starts this hour in New York City. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I was just calling because I'm about to start baby step number two, and um, I have some money set aside for the kids and custodial accounts and i didn't know if i was supposed to use that on that i've read make total money makeover in the handbook and i just it wasn't clear so i just wanted to clarify uh go ahead i I would not unless it was some kind of some kind of super emergency technically technically you can um Mm -hmm. but what what ends up happening is most of us that are parents uh feel like a, a dirt bag if we use kid yeah, money that no, we had set totally. aside for our kid right <laughs> mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that dirt bag feeling no, offsets any of the good progress you're making 100 <laughs> percent. and i thought that's what you would say but i just wanted to make sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> how much debt have you got something. sarah um non-house related 74 okay and the household income's what uh 310 Okay, so you're going to be able to get it without doing this, yeah. No trouble. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think I could probably do it in like 14 months. Yeah. Um, but. And yeah. how much is in the custodials? Oh, it's not much. It's like 10K. Yeah, so it doesn't even make so, a difference, yeah. really. Yeah, it's just more, yeah. of a con- yeah. more of a concept than anything. So, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yet another reason. But I mean, if um, you know, you're I, I don't know some bizarre thing. You you had a medical emergency, or of a, with an adult, and like you or your husband or mm-hmm. something in the house, and you there's a hundred thousand dollars in the kids' account, and we needed to pay medical. Yeah, I would use it for that. Yeah, you know, but but okay. but uh, um, most of the time. You just the the negative feelings aren't uh, don't uh, you know would offset any good the money would do, uh, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and so that's why we would say don't do that. I, I'd leave that money alone. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was curious the numbers or what it was specifically for or where did they get it? If it was that they funded it as parents, it's, yeah, I was just curious more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes down to it, yeah, that's exactly right. It's their money. So I would stop adding. Until I'm debt free, mm-hmm. and I would stop adding until I had my emergency fund, and I would stop adding to a custodial until I had 15% baby step four going into my uh, into my retirement fund. So now, so once you've walked up the baby steps and you're back to baby step five, then you would start adding again. But I wouldn't. Um, but it's kind of like retirement in the sense I wouldn't cash out retirement, but I would stop adding to it while you're at this stage. Ben is in Nashville. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm doing okay. How about yourself, Dave? Better than we deserve. What's up? Yeah, so I have a question about disability insurance. My wife and I have got your standard policy to our workplace, my 60%, uh, and my wife's is 70. And we have been considering getting supplemental disability coverage. We don't have kids yet, but plan on it. Um, in, in, a, in the next year, 18 months. And so we were just wondering what your advice would be on the supplemental coverage. Generally, it falls in the gimmick category, um, and okay. and so the bang for the buck is not as good. Uh, mm-hmm. Does your workplace furnish the other two disability policies? They furnish the the two that we have right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. We would be going outside of that I understand. to get the supplemental policy. Yeah, I understand. So, uh, and and so, but if you like, uh, your policy. Would cost pro- would cost your employer probably uh, half what you would pay for a small supplement policy. It's just it's mm-hmm. not meaning the supplement policies are expensive. They're a little bit gimmicky. That's what I'm saying for the actual coverage. Yes, they are expensive. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I mean, it's certainly dependent upon your uh, your occupation. Yeah, I was gonna say, what do y'all do, Ben? Do you have a high risk of something happening physically to you because of a job or? <laughs> No, I'm a lawyer, and my wife is a nurse. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, you, what you, are you guys out of debt? You've got some money built up, or what? We are on baby step number two right now. We should be out of out of debt in here in about sixteen months or so. Um, and we make at one hundred and thirty thousand a year total. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would not buy it. I would not buy supplemental okay. in your case. I. I as you've discovered, it's not, it's expensive for what it, what you get. And mm-hmm. you know, the, you've got the main thing covered because after taxes, mm-hmm. your, your 60% or your 70% is going to be about what you're coming home. I mean, you're coming home with 80% probably, but I mean, you're, you're not going to lose, uh, you're not going to be living on 60% of your current take home. you are be living 60% of your gross or 70% of your gross. And so, um, yeah. And I, uh, if I woke up in your shoes when I was in your shoes, I did not carry additional disability. And um, But I will re- reiterate, because I'm glad you brought this up. It's not something we talk about enough on this. Mm-hmm. Dis- long-term disability insurance is the most underinsured area in America. You need long-term disability insurance. Hopefully you can buy it through work very inexpensively or work furnishes it for you, or you can buy it through your association. If you're a home builder and you buy it through the home builders association or whatever, something like that, but get long-term disability insurance. It is very inexpensive for what it is for that first 60 to 70% amount. And you're 32 times more likely to become disabled than to die. If you're 30 years old, between 30 and 65. So you, your probability of disability between 30 and 65 is high, much higher 
than, than it is if you uh, than, than death is. And yet we all run around talking about life insurance, and you need to get life insurance mm-hmm. too. But um, but yeah. So Ben brings up a really valid point that disability insurance is vital, but supplemental is not. Yeah. So for any additional disability insurance, when would be a time that you're like, yeah, I would recommend. Something. I mean, is it is it labor? Because I would think if you're at a job that is more physically taxing, like you know, what I mean, if there's if you're in a blue collar situation of some kind, yeah, your your disability policy is going to be even higher because mm. it's it's as much occupation based as it is age or health based. So anything extra is not so, even I mean, necessary. If you're a high rise high rise window cleaner, right, right, versus you drive a, a cubicle for a living, right. You know, it's a whole different set of categories for you to get down. They're going to, it's really expensive. Okay. So again, you've got to go back and try to get it through some kind of an association. But you know, what we're talking about is something like an AFLAC policy mm-hmm. and it's like the cancer policy, the accidental death, death policy, yeah, yeah, yeah. the cat insurance, the uh, heart attack insurance, whatever, all this, it's all gimmick stuff. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't spend money on that stuff at all. And so I'm sorry, Nick Saban, but I just don't. There you go. This. You're not sorry. (laughs) Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) Aflac duck. Yeah, but there we go. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 45% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. So before we went on the air today, you did your uh, uh, free webinar on budgeting with the Every Dollar Gang, right? Yes, we did. Yep. We had um, yeah a couple of thousand show up. I think over 10, 11,000 registered. So there'll be some replays going out to those people that submitted their email address. But, um, but yeah, it went really well. We kind of just dove into the fact that your budget really is the fun, one of the foundational principles of winning long-term. You do this in baby step one all the way to seven and how most people feel still just out of control with their money, that paycheck to paycheck cycle. And then you have inflation on top of that. Student loan payments are about to start coming in again. So, so there's just a lot there. So really pressing people and showing them, Hey, here's how to do a budget And then even with every dollar, every dollar premium, like here's the, here is the functions for your day-to-day life with money and how we built it to help people, again, day-to-day, having it accessible on your phone uh, and just making it something that's part of your, your habits on an everyday basis. So it was, uh, it was great. And I have another one on the 24th of August. Um, So you can sign up at everydollar.com slash webinar for that one. 
and mm, I every dollar.com slash budgeting well i think that one's jade's i think we all have different no it's every they're all on there now they're all on one. according to this thing i have in my hand okay well according to the website okay i could be wrong but yeah. anyway so anyway you could try either one every dollar.com slash budgeting jade will be teaching another one she had ten thousand at hers george last is week. uh George is doing one as well, coming yep. up soon, too. Yeah. August 30th is Jade and George and Rachel Cruz. All of these are free webinars on budgeting with the student loans bearing down on you, inflation bearing down on you, credit card debts at an all-time high. Uh, folks are needing to get control, and the budget's the tool that helps you do that. It's completely free to go to one of these webinars. So go to everydollar.com slash budgeting or everydollar.com. Slash webinar was slash my last webinar. one. They may have okay. changed it since, but it right. was webinar. Let's, let's see what it is. You can find it either way. We'll get you going. Yep. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Julie is with us in Houston, Texas. Hi, Julie. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. And you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> well, um, my husband's family has a history of very early onset Alzheimer's. Mm. So my husband had to stop working at 49 years old. So his he has it. So he has it. Right, right, he does. And his mom had it. And she had wow. to stop working like early 50s. And she lived to be 67. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that so you understand that maybe with the early onset, they live a lot longer. Right. Needing do. care a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I have three kids. Mm -hmm. And so um, they are in their 20s, 29, 26, 24. And so they have about 15 to 20 years to prepare financially for the possibility of them needing 15 years of care. And I don't want them to be in the same mess that, you know, my husband and I are in. So my question to you is, how can they prepare financially for this huge um, burden? Now, I know they need long-term care insurance, but they're going to need you know, a substantial amount of money as well. Yeah. I'm sorry. Wow. What a, what a tough thing you guys are going through. Um, yeah. How long ago was he diagnosed, Julie, your husband? Um, five years, 54 now. Mm, how's he doing? Well, he's attending an adult daycare and uh, he's starting to progress a little bit, um, starting with hallucinations and stuff mm. and, just, yeah, he's, he's changing on me. I'm so I'm sorry, sorry, Julie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Uh, well, there is no, there, there is no uh, different formula. It's just, um, it, it's just got this, uh, I don't know, different urgency, I guess, if you will. Uh, to prepare because as you said long-term care insurance the typical policy only covers three or four years um, most of them don't cover mm -hmm. you know from 49 to 65 kind of thing um, right. you can investigate those types of policies the ones that I have seen are very expensive they're inordinately expensive because yeah. the, uh, the the long-term care industry is figured out that not counting you know you're obviously you all are an outlier statistically but the uh, typical nursing home stay is three years or less, two and a half to three years. That's the average. Uh, and so they're covering that, and that's about all they're covering. So they're not um, – but, yeah, you can investigate that. And the first three to four years of use of the policy then, when you are not able to care for them, care for someone, you know, you would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and But other than that, it's a, it's a wealth-building formula. What's the best wealth-building formula? You know, walking these baby steps and building wealth now you know you may want to adjust your baby step four and start thinking like it like sometimes people call us and they're going to retire early before 59 and a half and to have access to their 401ks and roth iras and so forth which you can get hardship access to those without penalties but uh it's hard to prove it and hard to pull it off so if but if someone's going to retire early we tell them put some of their money in non-retirement investing called bridge investing and okay. so, you know, instead of putting 15% all into Roth IRAs and 401ks, uh, I might put 10% there and 5% into just S&P 500 or some mutual funds that have low turnover ratios, right? So that you've got some money that's not trapped in a 401k that you could get to in case you had to deal this with this before 59 and a half. Does that make sense? And most likely they will. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, If they... 
Yeah, yes. You know, face the One same thing. One or more of them, probably. It's yeah. not, yeah, it's not a hundred percent, but yeah, you've had no. this had this horrible pattern that you guys have watched, um, and yeah, very, very mm-hmm. tough. So yeah, I, um, you know, and, and and then I guess the rest of the equation is spiritual and emotional, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, just just walking. Uh, through something like this in, in as a faith exercise, so to speak, and then and, and dealing with the emotions of, of what you guys are facing. I'm so sorry. I wish I had I wish I had a really good, easy answer to make the, mm-hmm. the money part easy. And even, but even the money part's not going to be easy. Yeah. And I think, Julie, for them, just to be able to, which I'm sure they are because they're experiencing it with their dad, I mean, as we speak. And so... Um, for them to know, hey, I I have to be even more disciplined and buckled down, mm-hmm. um, knowing, you know, some things about my future that is a possibility, you know, unlike the average person's walking around, they, they, and they don't know, you know, they may not have that deep of a family history that they kinda, are aware it, of. So it kind of just fast forwards for them a level of, I mean, kind of buckling down and, and maturity to know, okay, if this is really true, how much do I need to have so my family can take care of me? And that may mean sacrificing, you know, some of the fun or whatever it may be, but just being that much more intentional. And then also, I think, having the joy of life. And that was the emotional, spiritual part that you were kind of talking about. Mm-hmm. But also not letting fear, um, you or know, dread. drive drive all of this. You know, John Deloney coming out with a new book um, called Building a Non-Anxious Life. And not that that book is going to have all the answers, um, Julie, for your situation, but stay on the line and Austin can pick up because we want to give you, it's on pre-order right now, but we'll get you um, set up for for that to ship to you and then anyone else listening because I think that that's, um, it's a part of this equation that it could so easily turn Mm -hmm. into dread. a lot, yeah, which is reasonable and understandable, but also you don't want it to steal um, the the, the parts of life that do have the joy Mm -hmm. and being able to live in that. Mm -hmm. But that's so difficult. Mm. Exactly. So sorry you're facing that. Yeah. And if we can help you any, any way as you're walking through this, you call us anytime. We'll help you any way we can. But, um, yeah, the idea that, um, oh, I'll deal with that later. I'm just going to screw around now uh-huh. in my 20s and be irresponsible. Those kids don't have that option. Yep. they got to lean in. Yeah. they gotta, they got to be serious from day one. And that that's not a bad thing. That, part, that part's not a mm-hmm. bad thing. The reason is a bad thing, but the, the result is not a bad thing. This is The Ramsey Show. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Danielle is in St. Louis. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? 
Good. Hey, um, I have a car fleece right now, and it is going to end in April, the end of April 2024, and I'm starting to prepare what I need to be doing at the end of that. Um, currently, I'm in baby step two. I started last June, and I've, I'm about at the halfway mark right now. But I'm wondering, the only thing I have left in my snowball is three student loans. And then, of course, I'm just making my normal monthly payments on my car. Um, So I don't know if I should be trying to put aside money to buy that out at the end. The value on it versus what I will have to pay for the buyout is about 6000 in equity that I should have. So I don't know if I should be... Setting aside money so you think you're going to be able to buy it six thousand dollars cheaper than it's worth? Yes, I mean right now that's it's unusual. Valued at about, it's very unusual. It is. I just looked at the KBB today, and it's valuing at about twenty six thousand. Um, and my buyout on my actual lease contract has it at twenty twenty thousand six hundred and forty two dollars in April. In April, yeah, your car will go down in value down between bit. now and April. Right. Probably six thousand dollars. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what kind of car is this? Um, it's a Subaru Crosstrek, and yeah. I'm significantly under my mileage as well. So yeah, that, part of me is like, you don't get credit do for I that. Want- but the only way you get credit is the actual value of the car. So I, I'm going to guess and say the car is going to be worth twenty two. Okay, I'll just make a number up, okay? Okay. And you can buy it for 20 and so you're not overpaying for the car, but you've got all these student loan debts, and you got a $20,000 car, uh, and you're under your mileage. Uh, what's your household income? Um, it's just me. Um, my primary is just under 50000 and then my side hustle, I'm estimating to make about twelve this year, mm-hmm. so about sixty two, give or take. And what is left in your debt snowball? Just three student loans? Three student loans and then just my my fleece payment. How what's, much are those? My student what's the loans? balance on the student loans each? Um, I have I just made a payment today, so it'll be thirty five hundred, seven thousand three hundred, and eight thousand nine hundred. So total will be nineteen seven. Okay. All right. Uh I have a theory of what I might do. Sure. Um I'm oh, all open ears. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're going to have $20,000 and be debt-free by April unless there's some kind of miracle happens in the numbers I didn't hear. Okay? Mm-hmm. So if you were debt-free and you had $20,000 cash and you wanted to buy the car, we could talk about that. But uh, if you were going to just walk up and buy a $20,000 car in the middle of what you're going through right now, you wouldn't. Fair. Yeah, okay? that's fair. If, you know, and so... That means you don't buy this twenty thousand dollar car, and because it's not going to okay. be worth twenty six in April, it's going to be worth twenty one, twenty two. It's not. It's not going to be the deal of the century. It's at least it's just not going to be there. So I'm turning it in, and I'm going to have saved five thousand dollars to pay cash for a car. And okay. so I'm going to I'm going to knock out the thirty five. I'm going to knock out the thirty five hundred, and then I'm going to save five thousand dollars. So I'm putting five thousand dollars in your debt snowball to buy a car. Okay. In April. I, do, I have been putting a little bit aside already, so I'm at about six. So then I could consider <laughs> that done. Oh, uh, you were already cheating the baby steps. <laughs> I, I don't know that I call it cheating. I call it preparing. <laughs> Knowing that it's coming. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, I would stop uh, and buy a $6,000 car and okay. uh, when, when, and when April gets here. And in the meantime, I would just tear into these student loans. And then you can move back up in car later uh, with cash after you get your emergency fund in place. But in other okay. words, if this car was $10,000 to buy it instead of twenty, we might stretch and do it. But twenty is a bit of a stretch with your income numbers because you're only dealing with 62. Okay. That's kind of what I was wondering. I was like, it seems like it would be kind of right, right around yeah. the questionable mark. Yeah, so. it's it's a little above the bubble for me to be wanting to do it. If if I'm in your shoes, I'm just saying, what would I do if I woke up in your shoes? So, and you, except for the six thousand dollar already saved part, yeah, yeah, you were right has. on. We're right there together. Yeah, <laughs> she's doing it before you even told her. Now, some people might be built like, but Dave, you're going off the baby steps. You're going off the debt snowball. But this would be a time to say, no, I'm, not. I'm selling a car. So let, let's. Let, it would be like if you're selling a. It would be the same as if you had a thirty-five thousand dollar car loan, and we're like, hey, 
sell it. And get a $6,000 car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and let's say you were upside down on a car. And take a loan out. And you ended up with a small loan that Mm -hmm. was in the baby steps. That's the same thing, too. So all of this is just, we've got to get, we got to provide for basic transportation. Yep. And so, yeah, $6,000 car fits beautifully in this, and she's already a step ahead of us. (laughs) Bill in New York City. Hi, Bill. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I am in between buying an apartment for myself and buying a mixed-use building, and I'm not sure what to do. Hmm. Well, both are excellent things, and so it's a choice between excellent things, right? It's not like yeah, one. I don't know. I, I don't think one's in the stupid column and one's not. Okay. The advantages in a 20-year game plan of owning the home you live in are pretty dramatic. Um, and, but, but obviously investment real estate is pretty dramatic and wonderful. So, uh, but what happens is what people don't think about when you buy a home, the first thing you do is you do away with rent and rent goes up every year and home, you know, what you pay for your home doesn't go up every year. It'll go up some with taxes and insurance, but I'm talking about your payment. The, the largest line item in your budget is locked in. The second thing is it's going up in value tax-free. 250000 can be profit uh, after one year held, uh, single, 500000 married. Uh, and then the third thing is, is the one of the things we find in the millionaire studies, studying millionaires, is one of the biggest items is a paid-for home. That uh, stabilizes your, uh, you know, your your last 30 years of your life. You don't have increasing rents and you've got a very stable, predictable, non-chaotic situation because your home life is steady it, versus investment real estate over there is playing Monopoly. Yeah. And that's more of a game. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think owning your own place of residence is... It's a huge factor in not only just building wealth, but if your entire just financial picture for not just the math sake, but also just the peace of mind sake of having a place to live that's yours. And again, the fact that it's going up in value and all of that is is fantastic. So, um, so yeah, I'm all about buying the home for myself, but also investing in real estate. It's it's another great option for for wealth building too. Yeah, yeah. I, if I were you, I would buy a house first. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, after all that babbling, that's what I was saying. <laughs> you know, so yeah, just straight up buy a home and uh, then get it paid for, and then save up and pay cash for investment real, real estate. And uh, Rachel's husband Winston runs our family real estate, and he's a in real estate investor as well. They always pay cash; we pay cash um, for investment real estate. We love real estate. I'm a huge real estate fan, but I, I'm not a huge mortgage fan. And I just there's. Uh, I can always relate. I, I don't know. It's it's one part. Uh, it's a, you know, it's forty two years I've been married, almost forty one years I've been married, and, and um, going in my forty second year, I guess is the way of saying it. And yet, I can still remember that part of being single. That I think, gosh, I could live in a tent and have investment real estate. You know, because I always wanted to be an investor that badly. I've mm-hmm. always wanted to buy real estate, and so, it, you know, that's kind of what he's thinking. He's thinking, I just that that apartment over there, owning that thing, would be so cool. And so I can always relate to that emotionally. That's what causes me to babble through the answer. But at the end of the babbling, I still bought a house. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y-Refi. They're not 
a debt settlement company, and they're not connected to a bank. Why refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Why refi you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Savannah's in Orlando. Hi, Savannah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Um, we are homeowners, and um, our property taxes and car insurance rates in Florida went up like crazy this past year. Um, we are under on a lot of our bills, and we've been trying to make it work with our savings. Um, our savings are running out in the next few months, and we're trying to decide if we should sell our home because we have a lot of equity in the home or if we should accept a $10,000 gift from a family member to help us um, be able to stay in the home a little longer. Okay, so Savannah, how much how much is your home worth? Um, uh, a realtor came and they said our home was worth about four hundred thousand. And how much do you owe on it? Um, I believe uh, we got it two years ago. It was two fifty one. Um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking how much we owe on it still. So. Um, they said we'd walk away with. Um, a hundred and thirty thousand, roughly, okay. um, if we got for what it was worth. And how much do you own your car? Um, our cars are a big issue. We pay um, our, all our debt. We owe about twenty five thousand um, for our debt. What, what What do you owe on your car? Um, my car is, I believe, sixteen thousand, and my husband's is five thousand. Mm-hmm. And what's your household income? Um, we bring home about 3900 a month. Okay. What are you going to do when the $10,000 gift runs out? Uh, exactly. That, that's why I was thinking maybe selling the home would, would be better, but I wasn't sure um, what, what we should do. I wanted to make the right choice. Mm-hmm. Well, the fact that the $10,000 gift is, a, is a, it's just financial denial. I mean, you're mm-hmm. just kicking the can down the road. You you're still haven't dealt with the problem. The problem is your budget's upside down. Okay. Right? That's kind of what you were yeah. already thinking. <laughs> yeah, you were already thinking oh, that. Yeah. So what's your household income again? 3900 A month. Uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, a month. <laughs> $4,000 a month. How much is your house payment? Um, it went up to seventeen hundred a month uh, this February. Yeah, sell your house. Okay. You can't afford the house, and it wasn't the insurance. You couldn't afford it before, and you may need to sell the sixteen thousand dollar car too. Okay. Y'all are swimming in stress, aren't you? Yes, we are. This is not fun. Are y'all fighting? No, we're 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 handling it pretty well. We're trying to trust the Lord um, and decide what to do. That's Christian for I'm fighting. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, we are fight a little bit, but I feel like we've been doing okay. I'm kidding with you. All right. So, <laughs> how long you guys been daughter. married? How long you been married? Three years. Okay. And you've been collecting crap the whole time you got married. Now you got a big old pile of crap and a big old pile of debt. So let's get rid of a bunch of crap and get your life back. Okay. Sell the $16,000 car, sell the house, 
and get your life back. And there's a part, I, want you to, I want you to like your life and each other again. Yeah, and there's a part of trusting the Lord. Absolutely, we're people of faith. But there's also that, Savannah, you guys have to do, you, you guys have to make decisions, hard decisions, and you have to put action towards things that are needed. Right? Do you, do you get that too? Like, yeah, if I weigh three hundred pounds and I want to lose weight, I can't just trust the Lord. I have to back off the donuts. Right. It's both things, right? And that that's the thing, and it, that that's like Dave's example because Dave's addicted to donuts. So, uh, although I have I'm donut free for, gosh, about almost three years now. Mm-hmm. I'm donut free. So you'd bring donuts to our house. Pretty good. I'm gonna get my little donut coin soon. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Savannah, I mean, and I think for you guys, honestly, um, if you stay on the line, Austin's going to pick up because I want you guys, you and your husband, you've been married three years to go through Financial Peace University. This is nine lessons on exactly step by step what to do mm. with your money, because you guys are just kind of, you're just, um, you're just normal. I mean, really is what it comes down to. You're like yeah. you have a great house, you have great cars and you think, oh God, everyone else seems to be getting ahead and doing well. And here I am. And this, there's a lot of stress to this life that looks like it should be okay. And it's not, and I don't know what we're doing wrong. And so having a very methodical plan where you guys are on the same page and you know what's going on and you actually have a plan that you're working towards. And that's probably going to mean selling the house. Mm -hmm. Um, That's going to mean selling the car. It's mean backing off on some stuff because yeah, I mean, you guys are, you know, I mean, after taxes, you're probably bringing home 40K. Um, so that's what you have to work with. And there's a lot of debt here compared to that income. And so it's probably does feel very overwhelming, but it's possible to to change all of this. But it's going to require a lot of sacrifice and diligence on you guys on your end. And you, yeah, and you can do that. If you'll take a machete to some of this junk in your life, you'll um, you'll get a life back. Because right now you're, you don't you don't even realize how how hard it is to breathe. Yeah. Because you're just you're concentrating and you're being sweet. And honestly, you called with the exact right question, and you already knew the answer to it. That the ten thousand dollars just kicks the can down the road. It's you're living in an unsustainable set of mathematics, and the mathematics are kicking your butt. And you you already knew that, so you're you're on top of it. You're gonna you got the stuff to win. Rachel's right. We'll get you signed up for Financial Peace University. You know, her case is almost like a, a stereotypical case study thing. Larry Burkett mm-hmm. used to say, "We we uh, spend the first seven years of our marriage trying to attain the same standard of living as our parents." But it took them 35 or 40 years to get there. Yeah. And we do it in four or five years of marriage. They've been married three years, four years, and they've just been, get a house, get cars, get a house, get cars, get blah, blah, blah. And you just gather. And then you, all of a sudden you look up and you go, oh, crap, I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to kill you. The stress, I'm going to kill my spouse. My stress is, level is so high. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and but that's, the, the, the problem is the stupid banks will loan you so much money that they put you in bankruptcy. Because they don't have an off button. They'll just loan you money. Mm-hmm. You know, you can go get a credit card. You can go on a trip you can't afford. You can, go, you can go down here and get a car. And I'm like, you know, I was sitting with a young couple when I first started doing coaching many years ago. Their take-home pay was 2600 bucks, and the guy had a $1,200 car payment. Which was a, that's insane for now. No, that I mean, was that, insane 30 years that, ago. That was, yeah, that would be like having a 3000 or $2,500 car payment now, right? But he, you know, $2,600 take home pay, $1,200 car payment. Yeah. And he's like, we're having trouble paying for our kids' food. And I'm like, well, no kidding. Mm-hmm. I said, you need to sell a stupid car, man. And he's like, no, um, I can't sell that car. I said, yes, you can. He goes, no, God gave us that car. I said, God did not give you that car. He goes, how do you know? I said, because the scripture's real clear. The blessings of the Lord have no sorrow added to them. And this has got sorrow written all over it, Bubba. And he goes, well, even the finance manager said it was a miracle. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I bet it was a dead cum miracle that some bank approved your crazy yes. butt little purchase. But they will, they will loan you. So much that even the finance manager thinks it's a miracle. Can't believe it went through. <laughs> Must can, be the Lord. <laughs> whoa, I made another sale. Must Look be at that. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and God's up there going, I got nothing to do with this. Don't blame this on me. 
<laughs> Don't put my name there. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, the banks will loan you so much. They just, you know, and you know, there's actually people out there walking around that still think that if the bank will loan it to you, it means you can, can pay afford it. it. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's the same people that thinks yeah. if you have checks left in your checkbook, there must be money in the account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the same people. <laughs> Well, because you can afford the payment. You know what I mean? Like, that's the that's the mindset. I can afford the the living situation that we're in because we're not behind on payments and yeah. all of it. Right. So you're just staying right afloat. And that's where risk and life and job loss and sickness, all that never comes into play. But when it does, then that's your wake up call. Gotta love it. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour on the Ramsey Networks. And also my daughter is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Todd starts this hour in Phoenix. Hi, Todd. How are you? Rachel. Hey, Todd. What's up? I'm just calling up to uh, ask, uh, how do I protect myself from inheriting a timeshare? And to, to add a little context to that question, uh, my in-laws, they have expressed to my wife and her siblings that they plan on uh, including the two time shares into their will and trust. And um, pretty much I, I want to make sure that that timeshare has no way of ever getting to to my wife and I and uh her siblings have also expressed uh, their their uh, uh, they they don't want to to inherit the timeshares either. So, um, is, is there anything that that we need to do, my wife and I, to to protect? So the kids those? have yeah. figured out that timeshares are basically legalized fraud, one of the worst products on the planet. But the parents hadn't figured this out yet. They, you know, they they love it. They 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 think it's the best thing yeah. in life. But. So what I just said, you you guys hate it. They they love it. The parents just haven't figured it out. Okay, so basically, a timeshare is a liability. It's a bill. It's a problem. Which what you're saying, and I don't want to inherit a bill. Well, you don't inherit a bill, so you're not going to end up owning this. It's not going to be transferred to your name under any circumstances because you won't sign the transfer papers. You're just going to give them the old uh, salute. No, thank you. Right? Now, now, could the timeshare company foreclose on the timeshare? and They can and come back against the, the estate, or? but they cannot come back against you. Okay. So they may take some of the uh, parents' assets. Likely will. Likely will screw up the estate, but it's not going to come against you. It might come against what your wife would have inherited from her parents. It might mess that up, but it's not going to mess you, you and your wife up because you're not liable for your, for your in-laws' stupidity. Does that make sense? Okay. So they're, yeah, what they're yeah, doing is they're know. poisoning their inheritance. Todd, yeah. would there ever be a conversation with you guys to tell them that, yeah, we, I mean, do they know that you guys don't want it? 
Yeah. So, so my wife and her siblings, they have had that conversation and, um, but you know, we, we've all, I guess, benefited from the time shares. They, you know, they, like I said, they, they love their points. They, they use them and, uh, you know, they, they provided, you know, room accommodations for us on, on trips and stuff. But, you know, when, when time comes, yeah, I mean, if you buy a hotel, if your grand, if your mother-in-law you know, buys you your hotel it. room, it's the same thing. Except she doesn't end up damaging her estate later. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you guys so, need to explain to them that this is going to mess up their estate. Yeah. All right. Well, this is good news, knowing that it can't ever come to my wife and myself. No, you so. can't, because you you do not inherit debt. But the uh, yeah. and th- and this is debt. It's a bill. It's a liability. But you but but the estate does have to stand good for the estate. So anything that they own stands against anything they owe but you okay. do not inherit yeah, debt that may not be an issue then because they did it, it express to us that uh whoever the time shares will also receive a cash account i guess loaded with 20 grand to pay maintenance fees but I no i don't want the 20 grand i don't want the timeshare yeah. Keep the yeah. stupid thing. Throw it in the trash. No, no. 20 grand won't even touch. It, it, people pay 20 grand to get out of these dad blame things. Ugh. All the time. I mean, it's just, it's a horrible business. Full of fraud. Full of scummy operators. It's a filthy business. And yeah, you don't want anything to do with it. No, under no circumstances are we taking this timeshare. You can't give us enough money to take it. It's like it's a poison pill. All right, so that, that's really yeah. I was just seeing if there's any other stuff to protect myself. So yeah, much. you're fine. You, you you know how do I protect myself from my mother-in-law going eighty thousand dollars in credit card debt? You don't have to because you're not liable. But you're not going to get any inheritance because when they sell the house, they got to pay the eighty thousand dollars in credit card debt before you get anything. What you own stands against what you owe when you die. But children do not inherit debt. It will affect what they inherit because the debt has to be paid before there's any distribution net of the debt. And so the stupid timeshare is a debt, and it's an ugly debt because it's very hard to get rid of. You get stuck in these things, and one lawyer calls it legalized fraud. And again, we've worked with the timeshare industry. They are the filthiest, nastiest, lyingest bunch of thieves I've ever seen on the planet. They're horrible. They feed on old people. They feed on dumb people. They just It's awful. So they put old people in buses and ship them over there, lock them in a room, and keep feeding them pretzels until they buy a dadgum timeshare. It's awful. They're horrible business. So have I been unclear? I was going to say, how do you feel? How do I really feel how do you about timeshares? <laughs> it's an end. Man, I'll tell you. I, it I is. It's, gr- it's know, gross. Yeah. You know, you know it's uh, o- other industries do, do bad things that are not good for you. But this industry is particularly scummy. I mean, like the credit card people, credit cards are stupid, but uh, they're straight up. They just say, you know, it's 28%. We're going to screw you and you're going to love it. And people just go take it, and they just, you know, sign their... The, but they can cut it up and get rid of it. I mean, like, you, there's yeah, exit At least you plans. can get away from them. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, whole life people, you know, we're going to take all your money and give you almost no insurance and make you act like... And, and, and somehow make you think that that was a smart idea, and we're, we're going to screw you, and you're going to love it. But at least you can cancel the policy, you know? Uh, you know, car lease. At least you can get out of a car lease. Stinking timeshares, man. It's like a... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you just got me all riled up, Todd. I hate these. I hate that. Well, industry. and they prey too on and old people and dumb people. Well, yeah, yeah, but they they go and they target obviously specific people that they see out at a hotel, yeah. and they're like, hey, we can rope you in. Yeah. And and knowing that they probably don't even have the money to pay for this Freaking stuff. I mean, like it's yeah. Playing golf the other day down in Dad Gum Cabo, and this guy comes up and he goes, "Hey, you want your golf free?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "All you gotta do is sit down." Oh, get away from me! Sit down. Just you should. I will take a seven iron to your you head. You should, knowing oh that you're God. not going to get sign up for it, for but you could get free gum golf. Round of golf. I'm gonna sit and listen to your crap. Not a chance. Unbelievable. This is the Ramsey Show.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Teresa is in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Just fine. And you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I am knocking on the door of 61. I have no retirement money saved up whatsoever. I've been working the baby steps. I've got my little $1,000. And um, hopefully Social Security will still be there when I retire at 67. My question is, even though I'm in the baby steps too, my company uh, matches 4%. And I'm just wondering if I should go ahead and be putting that 4% into my 401k, even though I'm still in baby step two. So you're 61 and have no money? None. What do you make? Uh, I bring home roughly 67000 What is your debt? Uh, a little over 69000 On what? Uh, student loan is 11. I have a car loan of 18. I have a uh, personal loan of 12. And then uh, I guess you could say another personal loan of 26 on a tractor. Why do you have a tractor? <laughs> uh, well, we're country folks. And oh, we. Where's your husband? My husband is 75. He's drawing Social Security. He right. is basically um, disabled. Okay. I guess you could say he has COPD and emphysema. He's mm-hmm. had three back surgeries. So, so he don't need to be on a tractor. No, I'm, I use the tractor. Not anymore. Broke people don't have $26,000 tractors. Well, I have tried everything I can to try and sell this thing other than just letting it go back and letting them sell it for whatever they can sell it for. And no, then you paying haven't. And the difference. Tractors are selling I mean, right now. What's What kind of tractor is this? It's a Kubota. That it's tractor a, will sell. Uh, well, You haven't tried to people, sell this tractor. I... Well, when people say that they go buy a brand new one for the same price of what my payoff on it is. Well, you, your payoff is a personal loan. It's not a track. Is it? A, is it a, yeah, does it have an actual the lien tra- on the tractor? Yes. Okay. With who? Who do you owe? Kubota. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I would go to the credit union and borrow the five thousand dollars worth of difference and get this tractor sold. And you need to sell your car too. You guys are in emergency mode, girl. <laughs> You don't buy a $26,000 uh, tractor when you're broke. Well, I, this was two years ago before I discovered Dave Ramsey this well, past yeah, March. Okay. All right. What, what is your land over. worth? Yes. What's your land worth? Um, probably about three or 4000 Your land is worth $3,000? Yeah, we we it it's we bought it. Back I'm sorry, in per 92. acre. No, for the whole seven acres. You have a twenty six thousand dollar tractor for a four thousand dollar piece of land. Well, we hunt, and I use it to clear deer leases in our hunting area and food plots. Yeah, I told you I was a country girl. I'm not <laughs> criticizing country. I love country. I was over bush hogging last weekend on my farm, so I, I right. got that. Uh, it, it, and just because it's therapy. I, but, yeah, but, okay. Uh, I admit it was a stupid purchase. It yeah, was a, yeah, it is. You know, yeah, for the moment purchase. Yeah, okay. It, it no. gives you joy, but not as much joy as being as being broke is stealing from you. Right. Yeah, and you're starting to look up and go, I need something to eat other than social insecurity when I get to 66, 67. Yes. So, yes. yeah, I, if, if I'm in your mode, I am so scared, I'm going crazy, and I'm mm-hmm. selling tractor, I'm selling car, I'm going to get a $2,000 car, I'm going to work like a crazy person. Are you leasing the land, did you say, deer le- hunting lease? Are you oh, leasing it well, out to people? It did. It, uh, no, no. It's land that other people own that has given us permission uh, to hunt. We're, we're not having that physically pay for a lease. Oh, you don't have to pay a lease, but you're not receiving any lease money on your seven acres? No. Okay. All right. That's what I was trying to get to. Okay. Right. So you have seven acres, and literally the only value of it is four or $5,000. 
Yes, sir. It's 500 bucks an acre. Is it mountain land or something? No, it's it, it's just it's in between a bunch of uh, heirs that and nobody. I mean, it's paid for. I know, land, I know, but the, I, the it's house. just hard for me to imagine land that's that cheap. Five hundred dollar well, we an acre land in Arkansas. I can't. <laughs> we, yeah, I mean, you must be piping sunlight in there. Okay. We are. All right. We are. <laughs> All right. I got you, girl. Only okay. God knows where we're at. I love it. I, I kind of think I'm going to like I think that I've got a feeling it's beautiful. I really do. It, but, it uh, is. But anyway, mm-hmm. okay. So, all right. Um, yeah, selling let, car, let's, let's selling get, tractor. Get rid of the car, get rid of the tractor. What's the student loan? Teresa, why do you have an uh, $11,000 student loan? I've been paying on it since 1999. And... Did not take advantage of paying the last three years. Okay. Okay. So you've got to get in high gear mode because if you'll get this mess cleaned off, you can you'll have plenty of money to save yeah. and yeah. invest. Well, but you got so many payments coming out, you ain't got any room in your budget to invest, and that's why we tell people to clean their debt before they take advantage. Yeah. So of the, the short match. short answer: don't. I want you debt free right in now. a year by selling everything in sight. I want your husband afraid he's going to be sold next, okay? And uh, and, and uh, you know, and every deer in the area needs to be afraid you're going to sell him because you're going to shoot him and put him on something and sell him. I mean, oh my gosh, you're unbelievable! You got to scratch up every dollar you can, clean everything up, and and knock this out as fast as you possibly can because you you don't have any money to invest. You don't have any room in your budget with what you described to me, so. Uh, and, and you've you got you know as you said you got six years, so we've got we got to make we got to make hay while the sun shines, and you got to get with it. And um, and Teresa, it's gonna be it's gonna be extremely uncomfortable. Just yeah. know that going but, in well, because but it's gonna be really uncomfortable being eighty two and oh, have yeah. zero money, a hundred percent, and a rusty tractor. But you're you know what I mean. But I'm like after decades of living a certain way, untangling that is much more difficult i think than when you're living some some way for five years and you're on t- you know what i mean you're you're taking a life Teresa, and you're turning it on its head i mean you're going to be doing some really yeah. newer ways of thinking that are going to feel very uncomfortable but keep pressing through even though it's hard and every time so you like do saying, something smart heart. every time you do something smart i want you to say i'm doing this because i'm a country girl i don't want you doing anything else dumb and say i'm doing this because i'm a country girl quit blaming dumb stuff on country girl Blame smart stuff on country girl because country girls do smart stuff, and and you know th- this is what this is what you're about to do. You're about to do some really difficult things, and people in your life are going to think you've lost your dadgum mind. But what you're doing is you're trying to secure a reasonable last three decades, two decades of your life, you know, and and that that's very important to fight for. It's very important to fight for. And it's possible, Teresa. We've yeah. talked to people. It's gettable. Five it's gettable. years from, down from where you are, and it's a completely different situation. So you do. You. It's never too late. We always get that question, is it too late? It's not too for late. For me, you know. And not too late. But you're trading a $26,000 tractor for 150000 bucks in your retirement. You're trading an $18,000 car for another $100,000 in your retirement. You could have a quarter of a million dollars set aside with match if you'll get your butt out of debt now by the time you hit 67, 68 years old. You can get there. If not, maybe maybe 200, maybe not two and a quarter, or maybe not 250. But you, you can get to where you don't have this sense of being broke. And then if you want to go buy a $6,000 tractor to play with out of your $200,000 and your 70, fine, go do that. But otherwise, don't. mm -mm, No, no, no. And blame all smart things on being a country girl. Don't blame dumb things on being a country girl. This is The Ramsey Show.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. In Maine is John, Portland, Maine, to be exact. Hey, John, how are you? Hi, how are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help, sir? Yes. Uh, so I have a question regarding my 40K of student loan debt. Uh, once I pay off roughly 15000 of other debt, do I make a charge to pay off my 40K of student loan debt or use a main tax credit program that over 10 years would result in me paying 5000 The program would refund me my payments on uh, as a refundable tax credit, and should the program fall through at some point in three years or so down the road, I plan to have the money saved to pay the loans back you know, immediately so that I get rid of that debt. But is it a wise thing to just make a charge at it, disregard the program, uh, or let it go the 10 years and pay the 5000 over 10 years? Pay it off, John. Yep, disregard the program um, for many different reasons. But one of them is just that you have the ability to pay this off and you will be debt-free on your own regardless, very, very quickly. regardless of – a program or the government's assistant, whatever it is, like you, you have the ability, John, to pay this off and to be debt free and to move on with your life. If Maine had a program that would give you $5,000 in one year while you're doing it anyway, yeah, we would take it. But Maine has a program that keeps you in debt for 10 freaking years. I'm not standing yeah. around in this sewage for 10 years. No way. Yeah. I, Get I your agree. life back. What do you make? Uh, I make sixty five thousand at this point. But what do you do? I look into. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer in the power industry. Okay. How long have you been out of school? Uh, just a couple of years. I, I did just switch jobs. Right. I took a little bit of a pay decrease to just transition to a better work, work culture, as you definitely uh, allude on in your show. Work yeah, because you're not making much thing. for an electrical engineer. That's why I'm no, kind of like whoa. Um, yeah, no, I had to take a bit of a pay hit and transition to um, yeah. a different. What um, other debt do you have, John? Uh, my other debt is roughly fifteen k, twelve thousand in credit cards to get me through school, and then I um, uh, have uh, twenty five hundred in personal loan. Yeah, you, you know most electrical engineers make like a hundred, right? Yes, uh, and that's that's more. Uh, you have a couple of years, of, uh, more than a couple of years of experience, around five, and um, maybe a P two. But um, I, I'm only a couple of years out. I, I would like to see myself around eighty. Yeah, so I'm, I'm making some changes to try to okay, good. see if that can happen. Good. But all right, I just didn't want you to be settling down there about sixty five cents on the dollar where you should be ending up. So because you got a great degree, course, that's, a that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful degree. <laughs> So you, know, you got a great choice. By the way, the number one career field of people that become millionaires in America is engineer. N number I, I two is accountant. The other day, yeah. Yeah. Number two is accountant. Number three is teacher. Just to kind of give you an idea. So that's uh, of all, and we did the largest study of millionaires ever done. That's what we found. So you're in a great place. That's why I'm rooting mm -hmm. for you. I think you chose well there. But yeah, let's get the debt cleared off as fast as we can. Uh, and, and and the opportunity cost on your life what you could have been doing with your life while you were screwing around for 10 years with the state of maine is not worth it get get this stuff paid off yesterday take six jobs sell stuff get it cleared up really 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 fast and go have you a wonderful life yeah and you know the student loan conversation is is big because i think there's 40 million americans that student loan payments will be hitting in october and it's something that we're actually going to address on our live stream on Tuesday, September 12th. Uh, it'll be at 7 p.m. Central Time. It's free, you guys. So make sure to tune in because this the student loan, there's so many of these types of things, of these programs, and even with you know everything that happened with the Supreme Court. I mean, there, there's, there's all this stuff. There's all this chatter. Yeah, how did we get here? Where do we go from here? Yeah, and so being able to kind of just like clear – Clear all the all the messages that you're hearing and all the programs and all this repayment stuff and just say, okay, hey, what can you do? How can you take what you can control 
and knock this stuff out and to finally be free of student loans. I mean, our last segment, you know, there was a 61 year old who had been paying on it since the 90s. 1999. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, this is a, it's a, it's a big conversation to have, but also one that we feel like we're able to help direct and guide you. So make sure to tune into that live stream. It'll be actually Dave, you, me, Jade Warshaw. And and we're going to talk about this. And for, again, a lot of Americans, these payments are going to be hitting here in the next couple of months. And it, and it is, it is scary, right? Hundreds of dollars now that you may not feel like you have the margin for you're expected to pay. So September 12th at 7 PM student loan debt in America, how we got here, how we get out Go to RamseySolutions.com slash student loans. Sign up for the free live stream. We'll furnish it to you. We're expecting over 100,000 people to view that. And we want you to be one of them. Spoiler alert. We're going to tell you to pay them off. (laughs) I I know you're shocked to hear that we're going to tell you that. So just let you know right up front that's how it is. We're going to show you how, though, as well. Walk you through. Exactly. Just like we just did. Different scenarios. Yeah. Shirley is in San Antonio. Hi, Shirley. How are you? Dave, I'm honored to be speaking to you today. I've been a fan for years. Well, I'm honored to talk to you. How can we help? (laughs) I want to know if we should help our daughter pay off some debt. Um, She's got, she was in credit card debt, a couple of credit cards, about $50,000, two of them. Wow. And. Well, back the first of the year, she kind of drank the Kool-Aid, and she called them up, and she made a deal with one to pay on her that card at zero interest. The other one agreed to 2% interest. Good. So this girl makes $62,000 a year. She's not a girl. She's 56 years old. Um, and she is paying these guys $850 a month. And I just feel like I'm watching my daughter as a rat on a wheel. Just what does she make? Sixty-two thousand. So, I, if you help her, are you giving a drunk a drink, or are you helping her for the last time ever use? She's never going to use credit cards again. Has she learned her lesson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How much are you going to give her? I have. Well, my question to you is: I've heard you in the past tell people that are in debt like this to call the credit card. Like if she owes 20 on one, tell Is she behind with them? Hello? Shirley? Shirley, we lost you. If oh, she, shoot. I think we lost her. If she's, if we're behind, try, see if you guys can bring her back up. I don't think you can. I don't know. I'll put it on hold. Y'all work on it. Um, if she is behind, you can settle it for pennies on the dollar. If she's current, you can't. If she's got a deal where she's paying them $850 a month, you probably can't. If you are going to give her some money, I would only do it on a matching basis. Like every time she sends you a receipt for, uh, I don't know how much you want to give her, but if she sends you, you know, tell her you're going to give her, every time she puts 1000 in, you'll put 1000 in. Or something like that, if you got that much money and that's how much you want to help. Yeah, and making sure, too, Shirley, that you are in a position that you're able to do that. That's assumed. And I would dig into, like, what that $50,000, what like, what was that, right? And understand that, hopefully, you know, that it doesn't need to be a pattern uh, in her life that this is, like, the thing she just goes to all the time. Um, But to really... Oh, line six. Good. We got her back. We got her back. All right. So sure, Shirley. Yeah, we're, we're, about, we're about out of time, Shirley. But are you there? I'm here. Okay. Uh, is she behind on this debt? No, she's not okay. behind. Then they're not going to settle not. with her. They're only going to settle really? if she's behind. How much uh, How much money have you got? Uh, <laughs> we could pay it all. But... No, I mean, are you a millionaire? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I would not pay it all. I would match whatever she's doing. If you think that her behavior yeah. is permanently changed, no more drinking if you're going to give a drunk a drink. Don't don't be an enabler. But if you're assured that her behavior is permanently changed and you want to match her, she puts in a thousand, you put in a thousand. She puts in a thousand, you put in a thousand. That kind of thing. I'd do something like that. Let her sweat through this a little bit to solidify she never does it again.
Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. John Wooden said, whatever you do in life, surround yourself with smart people who will argue with you. <laughs> oh, That's good. I have done this. This I have done. That's his wise. It's an art form for me. <laughs> that is so great. That's I've good. never heard that from Wooden. <laughs> Very fun. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Tina is in Pensacola, Florida. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? Okay, I have a question. I've been following the baby steps, but I'm doing them out of order. Um, in 2020, we did FPU. And at the same time, before the nine-week class was over, I was my breast cancer rechoned after 10 years of being gone. Mm. So <clears throat> we kind of did things out of order because of that. We um, piled up cash and went into the emergency, you know, emergency Yeah, we don't, we don't tell you to work the baby steps when you're fighting cancer. <clears throat> well, I'm we tell you to just pile up cash. I'm stage four, so I'm always going to be fighting. Mm. Um, so we've paid off $46,988 of debt in these last three years, but I still have 9052 to go. And we have our fully funded emergency fund, almost fully funded. It's $12,000. And I'm just, I'm antsy to get that nine grand gone. At the same time, I'm scared to take out the emergency fund and pay off that debt. What type of cancer do you have, kiddo? Stage four metastatic breast cancer. How old are you? 56. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and so it, it came back with a vengeance three years After ago? After 10 years of, yeah. I, w I was diagnosed in 2008, and then it came back in 2010. And then both of that was just a reoccurrence. And then in August of this month, August of 2020, it came back as stage four. Wow. <clears throat> in my lungs. I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm okay. stable, but I'm still in, I'll be in treatment forever. Yeah. So, until so I'm not, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, so, w what, yeah. I don't think this is a baby. I, I would not say you do the baby steps. Normally, when someone's going through a chemo and trying to get towards remission, which is not your diagnosis. Um, Correct. But uh, uh, we would say stop everything. Don't work on the baby steps. Pile up cash. Fight cancer. In your case, you're electing to fight cancer while having some savings and fight debt, right? Correct. And so we're not going to call this the baby steps. This is just your choice. Instead of just piling up cash only, you're saying part of my walk is I want to go ahead and hit this debt. Right. That's what I'm hearing. And okay. Mainly, so I just I want you to, I want you to know what you're doing is you're saying it's a modified version of piling up cash is all it is. Okay. It's not a modified version of the baby steps, and that's okay. I mean, it's a nuanced difference, but so the point being that there's not a a baby steps answer to this. It's more of a thing of you have how much in in your emergency fund now? Twelve thousand one hundred ninety three dollars and ninety eight cents. And what's your household income? Thirty nine hundred a month after taxes. And you have nine thousand dollars in debt left. Nine thousand dollars and fifty cents, or nine thousand dollars, nine thousand fifty two dollars. Yes. Okay. I mean, we're able to, our, our, our expenses are right around 2100 a month because mm -hmm. we own our house. Um, That's good. But in Florida, mm -hmm. we're getting hit high with um, insurance. Yeah. Insurance. So <clears throat> um, our expenses are 2100 a month. So we have, I've been putting 1800 a month, well, 1500 a month towards that $300 a month. Yeah. Keeping it for other things that come up that aren't planned for so we don't have to touch our emergency fund Certainly, okay here, you know, here, here's the way I, I, here's the way i'm analyzing this and you you tell me if i'm wrong because i i don't know but in sitting in this seat i've had this discussion with people lots of times over the last 30 years 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what I understand about cancer and I, and I've never had it and I've not had, you know, my spouse fighting it, but I've had lots of friends and lots of people sitting in this seat. I've talked to about it. It's very, very important that you focus on winning the battle, right? Yes. I mean, you you have to focus your emotional energy, your spiritual energy on be on winning, right? Now, and and so having said that, then I would tell you that whether you add to the savings or whether you pay down on the debt, the answer is which one gives you the most peace because I want you to have the most peace so you can concentrate on the most important things, living. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There's not a wrong answer. Yeah, so for, for, for you, Tina, you may say, I would feel more peace with this $9,000 gone. You know, like, or, or for some people, it's like, nope, the minimum payment's fine. I just want some cash over here, right? So it's kind of this, you choose your journey with where you're at uh -huh. of what gives, what, what gives Tina the most peace. Because you need, you need peace because you need power. Right. And, and well, I look at you've got an amazing, you've got an amazing right? tone to your voice. I'll just tell you, there's a lot of joy in your Thank voice. You. There is a lot of peace that I have, and I, the reason I was getting six months to live, I'm 36 months later, and I'm good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, so, and, and talk about it with your spouse, too. I mean, what gives you guys the best quality of life right now? Um, and, and, you know, it might be that, it, you know, we'd rather say, instead of having 12,000, we'd rather have 22,000, um, or instead of having 12,000, I'd rather have 3,000 and no debt. Um, you know, what, you know, Rachel's right. You choose your journey. And that's what I'm telling you because that all of that is a modified version of piling up cash. The reason for piling up cash and pushing pause on the traditional baby steps is to give you the power the emotional, spiritual, and even financial power to lean into this fight and uh, to enjoy the ride. Uh, and and uh, so as much as you can. And, and that's what we want for you. So um, you're smart. You're game on. There's not a thing in the stupid column. Fight 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 that's what's that that's what that's what we want for you we want you to have the the peace of a warrior to fight and and to go into this and and not be going oh i'm doing this wrong by ramsey you're not there's not a wrong pile up cash or pay off debt what gives you the most power what mm -hmm. gives you the most peace good so reminder when you have storm clouds in your life folks or when you have a unexpected thing you get a job layoff you get a a, a baby on the way you're fighting you get a cancer diagnosis you get a whatever like this you, it's not modifying except you just stop the baby steps and pile up cash you can come back later mm -hmm. with a pile of cash and restart so if you pile up 50 grand file pile up 100 grand and you know you could push play again and run the table yep. on baby steps one through three you know just just like that you know if you got a big old pile of cash but in the meantime you can concentrate on what's important which at that moment is the storm yeah get it running into the storm not from the storm that's right and uh it's the old story of the buffaloes on the plains run into the storm that way they're in the storm not as long because the storm goes over them faster since they're running into it and cattle run with the storm so they end up staying in the storm so be the buffalo be the buffalo run into the storm that that's the old story and that's that's the thing so ah I'm sorry, praying, for, Tina. praying for you, girl. Yeah. If you can help you in any way, your husband in any way, y'all call us and let us know. We'll help you any way we can. This is the Ramsey Show. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, 
go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.